Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. And uh, in this video, I'm in Topaz Studio and also Topaz Adjust AI. It's a great combination and something I like to use together. And one of the things I like about Studio is it can sort of uh, serve as your home base. And then from there, you can pop over to some of the other uh, Topaz Labs apps if you need to. So that's what I'm gonna do here. This is kind of a follow-up in some sense to that video in which I talked about doing traditional sort of non-artistic edits in studio. And that's what I'm doing here today. Again, artistic depends on how you define that. And you might consider this artistic because it is a little bit of an interpretation um, in terms of how I edit this photo, but it's not artistic in the sense that I'm not using the art or the stylistic filters like impression, abstraction, or any of those. So I'm just using kind of the traditional filters. So let's hop into it. Here's my base photo. And the first thing I'm gonna do is crop. And so I'm gonna go with a 16 by nine. And I just think it fits this scene and I need to straighten it. I need to also move that in a little bit. Here we go, let's see. I wanna get that about even. I think that looks about right. It's always hard to tell for me. So I'm gonna say apply and there's my photo. Now I'm gonna hit fit so I can see it a little bit bigger. And of course the first thing I notice is, well there's a lot of first things I notice. It's way too yellow, it's a bit too bright. Uh, there's no contrast, it's kind of hazy. So I'm gonna work on all that between these two apps. I'm gonna start with the basic adjustment here. And the first thing I wanna do is just try to work on that temperature. So I'm just gonna go to temperature and I go all the way to negative 100. And even that, it didn't really quite get it blue enough in my opinion, it's still too yellow. We'll work on that a little bit more here in a bit. I'm gonna add a little bit of clarity. Um, clarity is great at adding a little bit of depth it's like that edge contrast. So it helps a little bit, create a little bit of depth in the photo. And while I was at temperature, I meant to also go to tint. Um, that does help a little bit as well. So maybe something about like that. And the before, here's the original, and the current state, much better, but I think a long way to go to get to where I wanna be with the photo. So I'm gonna keep going. Next up is precision contrast, which I absolutely adore. So I'm gonna grab that. And I'm just gonna pop through these. So I did about 29 on low. So I'm gonna go with there, that's 28, that's close enough. I'm gonna do about the same thing here on medium. And on high, I went quite a bit more. I went to like 57. So you can see that it had a big impact on the photo. Here's the before, and here's the current state. Now, the other thing I like is that you have these additional controls down at the bottom. So I'm gonna take shadows down just a little bit, um, which actually helps with contrast because you're creating a greater difference between the bright and the dark spots. And I'm gonna take um, the highlights down quite a bit as well. So maybe about uh, 40. And again, just, you know, the, the lights, the street lights are blown out. That's just, that just is what it is. So uh, there's gonna be no changing that, but I actually don't mind because they're lining up and kind of pointing to the building. Those little bright spot, I don't know, they kind of work for me, even though technically they're blown out and kind of um, uh, ugly in that sense. I like the starburst look because I shot this at a tight aperture. So I'm gonna go with it. It's in the photo, I can't change it. You just kind of deal with uh, with what you got to deal with, right? Okay, now I'm done with precision contrast. And at this point, I was looking at it, and I was like, what else can I do? So that's where I went to filters, plugins, and I went to adjust AI. Okay, so here's the landing page, if you will, in adjust AI. And I always go up here to the controls, and I'll click on that. Um, by the way, I should point out, there's a lot of cool looking looks here. Um, now it does reprocess if you start clicking on things. So I'm going to hit that and go into the editing. If you want to see a full review of Adjust AI, I actually did a video about that a number of months ago when it came out. So I'm going to start here in uh, the brightness uh, panel, and I'm going to give it a, uh, some global contrast of about 19, and I'm going to take the highlights down to like a negative uh, 40 or so. So something about like that. All I'm doing here is just trying to manage the light. Now here's, I'm gonna hit the temperature again because it was just still way too yellow for me. So I'm gonna do something about like that, which is fairly drastic, but I don't think that looks bad. I mean, it's still uh, kind of hazy, but uh, it's not a yellow haze. And I just don't like yellow haze. I can deal with the blue haze, but yellow, I'm just not gonna do it. Uh, here I'm gonna add some more tint uh, to kind of balance that out a little bit. So maybe something about like that. And I'm actually gonna take the saturation down um, a slight amount, which is not something I do a lot, but you know, this is a pre-dawn shot in Paris, hence no tourists in the way. Um, and so it was just really early and really hazy. I think it rained or something before or after that, I can't remember, uh, I guess after because it's not really wet. But um, anyway, I just, I just needed to control the photo. So let me show you the original. This is just in Adjust AI. This doesn't count the stuff that I'd done before. So this is the, 
when I started in Adjust AI, and that's my current state. So I'm making a lot of progress, and I think hitting it with temperature and tint twice has really helped me. Now the other thing I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna skip clarity, I'm gonna go into details, and I'm gonna get about a 30 or so, uh, 31, 32 on medium detail. It's really crisping up the front facade here of Notre Dame, which I just think that looks great. It's so much intricate detail. Let's just zoom in a little bit, take a look at that. And um, let me show you the before. There it is before, and there it is after much crisper. But you notice you're not really picking up a whole lot of noise in the sky. Uh, and of course the colors are different, right? So there's the before and the after. I'm gonna go back to fit. Now the only other thing I wanna do here is get into split toning. And that is I'm gonna change the saturation some in the shadows. So I'm gonna go to about a 30 or so in shadows. And uh, again, I'm just bringing up more of that blue overall because I'm changing the look and the mood of the photo. Uh, the, the, the hue I'm gonna leave at 65. I actually might go a little bit more on this, maybe about a 34 or so. And one more time, here's the before. This is before I got to adjust AI and after. And I'm, I'm really happy with the photo now. So what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna say apply and that'll drop it back into Topaz Studio as another layer. Okay, here we are. So now I've got my adjust AI layer there and the previous edits that I'd done prior to jumping over to adjust. And then here I just throw in a couple of filters that I like. I'm gonna start with quad tone, which is one of my favorites. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it on the basic settings there and I'm gonna to go to about a 35 or 40. Let's try 40. I'm getting a little bit of that blue, but if you notice also it, it picks up um, sort of those sort of those browner yellow tones in the highlights and whites. That's just the pre-selected uh, colors that fall in each of those categories. Um, and I'm not changing them because they kind of work for me. The darker, that would be black and shadows, they're picking up more of the blue and the brighter parts of the photo, the highlights and whites are picking up more of these earth tones. I think that works because that's bringing up some of that color in the face of Notre Dame. So there's the before and there's the after. And it's also giving me a little bit more blue in the sky. Again, not exactly a traditional edit, but definitely not super artistic from the standpoint of there being no um, art filters applied, but maybe artistic in terms of my color choices. Now I'm gonna pop over here to dehaze, and I'm gonna give that just a little bump, maybe like a 19 or you know, 18, 19. And once again, that's creating a little bit more crispiness in the front facade here. Let me turn that off. So there's before, and there's after. I don't know how well you can tell. It's obviously clearing up the sky a bit as well. So I feel like I've come a long way with my photo. There's the before and there's the after. And this is after what, two edits or two filters here. Pop over to Adjust AI, get a few filters there, and then a couple more here. And just in case there's any uh, question about what did Adjust AI add to this, let me show you. So here's the photo current state. Let me turn off this layer and there it is with just the adjustments I've made in studio. So going over to Adjust AI, which involved uh, the color and temperature change, some contrast, some detail, and some split toning, really gave it quite a bump. So one more time, there's the before going over to Adjust and the after, right? So now that I look at it, making those comparisons, I almost think it's a little bit blue. So I might come in and maybe take down the saturation a little bit. So you can just go into basic adjustment and come over here to saturation, bring that down a tiny bit, and maybe even increase the warmth if you want. Um, I'm getting a bit more of a traditional black and white kind of monochrome look in doing so. So I don't know that I'm gonna do much with that temperature. I actually might pull that back a little bit. The point is uh, whether you like it or not, you have the ability to continue to add filters and get more control over your photo. But that was really my workflow. I just wanted to show you how I use uh, the basic stuff in studio, pop, pop over to Adjust AI for kind of a kick, and then come back and, and make some additional enhancements here in studio. And it gives you a lot of control over your photo one more time. That's what I started with, right? Not including the crop, which I did that in the beginning, but very bright, very yellow, just hazy and kind of uh, right? And now much more moody, kind of, I think, more of a, a pre-dawn kind of blue hour look and certainly more in line with what I wanted the photo to look like. So that's how I did it in Studio and Adjust AI. They complement each other very well. And uh, that was another Topaz Studio, Topaz Adjust AI edit for you. So that was it, my friends. I just wanted to share that workflow. And if you haven't yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button down below if you don't mind. Give me a thumbs up if you like the videos. That helps me because it tells YouTube you like what I'm doing. And I hope you do. So thanks for watching. I'll see you soon, real, or no wait, I'll see you again real soon, my friends. Have a great day, thanks for watching, and adios.